So we'll write grade eight, grade nine. So, in the last week, if you can remember, we have already spoken about uh, the Persian War, where the, the city state, in the city states of uh, the early Greek civilization, how uh, and how Darius uh, the first and his son uh, Xerxes or Xerxes uh, tried to conquer and invade the city states of uh, uh, the early Greek civilization. Of course, because Sparta was. Uh, very, very brave, along with the, the Athenian people, uh, the conquest of the Persian people uh, failed. Later on, uh, we had uh, some reformers who tried to just uh, reform what has already been done by the war, uh, including Pericles. And Pericles, he was like a uh, solemn reformer and a law giver. Later on, Pericles started to establish uh, strong Athens. Uh, in its a democracy system. And in that democratic system, they try to they try to include the people and make the people govern their own city. At his funeral, of course, at the funeral of some of the low uh, of the brave soldier, Pericles had already insisted on how we must all serve our uh, city state Athens as we all have a special responsibility towards it, and that uh, all citizens of uh, our city must uh, be equal in uh, the eye of the law and must be treated equally. And later, he introduced some of uh, the most important uh, transformation and reforms for the city of Athens. Unfortunately, the people in uh, the city of Athens. Uh, had made up their mind to steal uh, the Delian League. And because uh, they have done that, <coughs> sorry, I was sneezing. So, because uh, they have stole the Delian League and uh, made the, the money from uh, the League for their own uh, repel of the city state of Athens, uh, the Spartan people did not like that. Consequently, they have set up another league, which was uh, the Peloponnesian League. And after establishing the Peloponnesian League, Spartan people had conquered, uh, conquered and invaded Athens. So Athens was defeated by Sparta. And we have spoken about how the process was made. And the worst thing about that was that the Spartan people had the help from the Persian, their everlasting enemy, in order to defeat the Athenian fleet of ships. And of course, after that war, a decline to the whole city state of Athens happened. And not only Athens, but only the city states of Greek itself. So the Peloponnesian War ended the, the greatness of the Athenian Golden Age. So the one thing that stopped the, the Athenian Golden Age was the Peloponnesian War. Although the Athenian economy eventually revived after the Peloponnesian War, yet the ethnic, the ideas, the thoughts, loving the country, working for the country, paying equal in the eye of the law, all of that was ended by the Peloponnesian War. And what replaced that was mere greed. All the people of uh, Athens became very greedy. All of them wanted power and money. In Athens and elsewhere also in the Greek world, the democratic government suffered, meaning that at first, we have Solon, we have Pericles, and all of these reformers and lawgivers tried to do their best for their country so that each and every one of their citizens must have equal rights. But after the Peloponnesian War, all of that changed, and the democratic government suffered because only greedy men came to power, and only greedy men wanted to obtain the opportunity to take advantage of other people. So, for example, I'm holding control of all of you right now, so I'll take advantage of you and steal your money. Oh, finally, Muhammad Al-Qahtani, journalist.
Of course, fighting continued to disrupt uh, the Greek war with Sparta itself soon suffered defeat at the hands of uh, Thebes, another Greek city state. Uh, as Greek battled among themselves, a new power rose in Macedonia, a kingdom to the north of Greece. By the year 359 BC, its ambitious ruler stood poised to conquer the querulous sum of the Greek city state. And here we just need to underline this. Over the course of history, if you can remember, in Egypt, for example, you will find out that some people from the north started to try to invade them. The Parpirians living in the Sahara in North Africa, they tried to invade the Egyptians. In Mesopotamian civilization, the Parpirian, which are the uh, Persian, came from the north trying to invade them. Uh, nowadays, the Mongolian came from the north. In India, from uh, the mountains in the north, came some uh, uh, Parpirians and some uh, uh, invaders trying to invade the city states of India and later the Indian civilization. In uh, Chinese civilization, the Parpirians living in the north, and the Greek city states, uh, first uh, the Mycenaeans came from the north, and later the Dorian came from the north, and now from Macedonia in the north of early Greece. Uh, came also another people trying to uh, invade and conquer the state. So always, at any civilization that we have studied or will study, we will find always from the north will come some people trying to invade the, the city state or the civilization we are talking about. Even the Spartans themselves, they were ascendant of the north, strong though. With me, nine. Yes, you lagged out for a bit. Okay. So, so far, so good. Yes. Okay, so we have already covered that, and I believe uh, if you have any question on uh, topic one or topic two, you may come to me on Clausera or ask me on the uh, discussion room. There is a discussion room here. I believe you should uh, enter sometime. Discussions, okay. Blah, blah, blah. So, moving to the topic number in topic number three, we'll speak about the Greek thinkers, artists, and writers. Today, we'll just speak about two thinkers. Okay, we'll not take too much. All right, I'll start and you can continue. In topic number three, we start by saying, even in the midst of wars and political turmoils, Greeks had confidence in the power of the human mind, driven by curiosity and believe in reason. Greek thinkers, artists, and writers explored the nature of the universe and the place of the people in it. To literary admirers, Greek achievements and the arts presented the, the height of human development in the Western world. They looked back with deep respect on what one poet called the glory that was Greece. So, I need you now to just uh, understand that we are speaking about after the city-states of uh, early Greek civilization faded away, after they were conquered. So, now we are living in a time not prosperity, there is no flourishment, uh, there is no equality between uh, them. And, uh, so, we are living right now in that uh, period of time in a very bad timing for the people in Athens, Sparta, Thebes, and all the city-states of the early Greek civilization. That's why the period when people stood together at the period of Solon and Pericles, and we also uh, Leonidas of Sparta, of course, this period was called the Golden Glory or the 
golden age of the Greeks. So to speak first about Greek thinkers, artists, and writers. Yusuf, can you start? Philosophers and the pursuit of wisdom. Philosophers and the pursuit of wisdom. Of wisdom. As you have as you have read, some ancient Greek thinkers challenged the belief that events were caused by the whims of gods. Instead, they used observation and reason to find causes for events. The Greek the Greeks called these thinkers philosophers, meaning lovers of wisdom. Of wisdom. Greek philosophers explored many subjects, from math many subjects from mathematics and music to logic or rational thinking. Through the reason, through reason and observation, they believed they could discover laws that governed the universe. Modern, much modern sense, much modern science traces its source. It traces its roots to the Greek search for such principles. All right, to speak about it, uh, at that period of time, uh, we will see that some ancient Greek thinkers uh, challenged the belief that events was caused by uh, the whims of gods, uh, meaning that uh, we have said that uh, they were polytheistic, uh, believing in many gods, including uh, their chief god Zeus, uh, son, here is the god of war, Athens, the goddess of wisdom, and blah, blah, blah. So some thinkers came to discuss and question the essence and existence of those gods. Really? So wind is blowing by someone who's living on Mount Olympus. Uh, the lightning uh, is because Zeus is angry. Come on, that's, that cannot be true. So, some people of them started to observe, they started to come to a common understanding, a mutual reasoning, and later they started to seek for wisdom. And by seeking for wisdom, they were lovers of wisdom. Because they were lovers of wisdom, we call them philosophers. And philosophers at that period means lovers of wisdom. So, they love to reason, they love to have wisdom, and they just thought. They thought about everything and the nature. Okay, so they were called philosophers. And a philosopher means a lover of wisdom. For those Greek philosophers, they started seeking logic. So, if you need to convince me, convince me with logic. Do not just tell me that uh, there is a flying god and a god can take uh, the uh, human shape and come to our uh, world and then he will be killed and come on, be reasoning, okay? So have a sense of logic. Yeah? So they just needed logic and a rational thinking. And uh, for all reason and observation, they believed. So they believed in reason, they believed in the observation, and in the logic they could discover law that govern our own universe and still up till this day much of our modern science is rooted in the greek civilization so from those observers from those thinkers and philosophers came our modern sciences so what about debate debating morality and ethnics. That's a very important point. Ibrahim, can you read? Yes, sure. Debating morality and ethics. Some Greek philosophers were interested in ethics and morality. They debated uh, such questions as what was the best kind of government and what standards should rule human behavior. In Athens, the sophists questions accepted accepted ideas to them success was more important than moral truth they developed skills in rhetoric re re rhetoric uh, the art of skillful speaking ambitions men uh, ambitious men could use clever and persuasive uh, uh, to advance their careers 
the turmoil of of Peloponnesian War led many young Athenians to follow the sophist older citizens. However, accused the sophist of under underlining traditional Greek values. So, the whole idea behind the uh, sophistis is uh, the debating. So, when can we call a person a sophist? A person becomes a sophist when he stands for proving himself right, more important than the true event. For example, I and Ahmed, for example, uh, had to come and uh, there is an argument between both of us. Uh, Ahmed thinks something is right and I think that it's wrong. Ahmed is totally correct. Something is totally right. And I see it from my own point of view as wrong. If I'm using the fastest methods, then I'll prove to Ahmed that this thing is wrong, although that it's right. But I just need to succeed in my uh, conquest. That uh, to prove to Ahmed that the thing is wrong, not right. So some of these people at that time, they started to seek success more important than seeking truth. Okay, so they just needed to prove themselves uh, as uh, a successor in everything and uh, whatever they think. Okay? So that's right, that's wrong, and that's it. And I'm gonna use uh, rhetoric. Rhetoric means uh, the art of skillful speaking, persuasion. They will persuade people with their own ideas and also their own thoughts, whether those ideas and thoughts are right or wrong they do not care they only care about uh, proving themselves right one of those people okay of course not all of them were bad all right so one of those people the sophistess was scrapes I believe you have heard about him before. Scripps is considered to be one of the most important philosophers and thinkers during the course of history, not just then the early Greek civilization. Yet up till nowadays, in our day today, he, along with his students Plato, both of them are being introduced to us and we study their works up till this day and even some of you are gonna study about them in college so one about, about which one to create and plato okay to create and plato both of them are very 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 essential thinkers and philosophers during the course of history not just in early greek civilization so during two secrets salem can you read All right, uh, Socrates challenges tradition. One outspoken critic of the sophists were Socrates, an Athenian stone mason and philosopher. Most of what we know about Socrates come from the student Plato. Socrates himself wrote no books and said he passed his days in the town square and asked, square asked people from about their beliefs. Using a process we know called the Socratic method, we would pose a series of questions to a student or passing citizen and challenge them to examine the implications or their answers. To Socrates, the patient examination was to was a way to help others seek truth and self-knowledge. To many Athenians, Athenians, however, such questioning was a threat to accepted values and traditions. Stop here, please. All right. So we're speaking about a man that is called Socrates. He was one of the sophists. So he used reason, he used his own ideas in order to persuade people. But he challenged that tradition in which I must prove myself right in all cases, whether I'm right or wrong. And he started to ask people about their own ideas, their thoughts. Why are you doing this? Are you doing that in order to seek truth or you are doing this only to prove yourselves right. Uh, are you acquainted with uh, uh, Dr. Ahmad Didat, Dr. Zakir Naik, Yusuf Estes? Do you know those people? I do. They're all um, yes. they usually like debate. Um, 
Yes, and, so Ahmad Didat, uh, may uh, God bless his soul, Dr. Zakir Naik, and also Dr. Yusuf Estes, all of them, they are uh, Islamic preachers. So they preach people with Islam. Yet they are using the Sophistic method. What is a uh, Sophistic method? Or Socratic, sorry. A Socratic method. What is that, that Socratic method? So it's simply, merely, uh, <clears throat> some questions that are being asked to a person in front of you and from his own answer to those questions uh, he will come to find uh, the truth about uh, the idea or the problem or the thing he is uh, speaking about so for example for Socrates, Socrates he just uh, challenged that how uh, some some gods as you claim living on mount olympus are intervening in our own lives and trying to condemn us to uh, whether have a good life or uh, a very bad life. So, and he started asking people, come on, can you create this mug? Can you create this laptop? Uh, can this laptop create itself? So, and he started asking a series of questions. From those series of questions, they come to the truth. Of course, the other people who did not want people to become illuminated and seek truth, of course, they stood against him. So, Socrates, he used his method in order to convince people with uh, what he sees right and to try to get uh, the truth from their own point of view. Okay, so Ahmad, for example, or uh, Ibrahim, uh, he thinks that uh, uh, studying world history is very bad. So, I'll come to tell him. Uh, okay. Uh, do you study English? Yes. Do you study mathematics? Yes. Do you think that uh, they are uh, important? Yes. Uh, have you tried to do something bad in the past? He will say, yeah, I have done plenty of things that are very bad. Okay. If, I'm to if I told you that uh, what you have done, you are going to repeat again. He will tell me it's impossible because I know that it was wrong. So I'll tell him. What if I told you about what other people have done and they have done it wrong? Will you still do it? He will say no. And then I'll come to tell him that why we are studying world history to learn from the past. Right? He will say, yeah, so it's important. He will say, yes, it's important. So just trying to convince people from their own point of view by changing their thinking. That is the Socratic method. Asking a series of questions in order to turn the thinking and the thoughts of the people. So, of course, Socrates himself used this method in order to change the Athenians right now. Because right now they are not standing for what is truth. They are not standing for the city-state of Athens. Yet, they are just standing for their own selves. They have become greedy and they need nothing but money and power. Consequently, he refused all of this and he started to have uh, uh, debates with them. And of course, uh, those uh, corrupted men uh, did not like that action. Consequently, by the age of 70, Socrates was put to trial. And in his trial, uh, he was uh, uh, his enemies, of course, uh, the people whom he did not like or did not like him, accused him of corrupting the city's youth and also failing to respect the gods. Standing before a jury of 501 citizens. Remember, Pericles made only a jury of 500, yet here we can counter 501 citizens. All of them standing in front of Socrates, trying to condemn him to death. And that's exactly what happened, as they did not accept his defense, and the jury condemned him to death. Any question? Yes, Noah. I don't understand about what he about what he talked yeah. about. What about what he? Yes, yes. I really we are talking really about the Greek thinkers, including one whose name is Socrates. You came late, so try to come early. No, no, teacher, I am come with you from the first. I didn't understand. Anyone else understand? 
Okay, now anyone else did not understand? Guys, anyone else? Yeah, Ibrahim, Yusuf, Ahmed. They are Salim. asleep. They are what? Sleep. Sleeping? Yusuf? No, I'm not. Joke. Okay. So, uh, again, uh, Nawaf, we're speaking about the Greek thinkers. So, the first thing that I said is try to know which era we are in, the time itself. So, we have finished now the uh, Persian War, and after the Persian War came the Peloponnesian War between Sparta and Athens, and of course, each one of them with their allies. Later, after this period, Athens again started to revive with its own income and prosper in the uh, trade. Yet, the ideals had it changed. The ideals means the thinking, the beliefs, the ethnics, the morality. Like at the beginning of the city-state of Athens, all the people started to serve the country and all of their life and money was for the country, which is Athens. But now everything has changed. People have become greedy. You will have become what? Greedy, seeking only money. Even a group of people called Sophistus. Those people, they just wanted to prove themselves right, whether they are right or wrong. Okay? One of these people started to challenge the tradition. His name was Socrate. He was a philosopher, a, thinking, a, th a thinker, and also he wanted people to have uh, uh, the truth and uh, go back to the old methods of their early ancestors, uh, which is uh, standing for the country, living for the country, and uh, seeking truth out of uh, what we had. One of the debates he had was about the gods and goddesses of Olympus. The, he did not believe on those gods and goddesses. So he did not uh, believe that uh, a person called Zeus uh, can hold control of the thunder and that uh, he killed his son or uh, a god can die or blah 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 whatever uh, myth you have so he started debating to the people and started asking them, uh, them a series of questions those questions he asked uh, we called them the Socratic method which is uh, seeking truth by uh, answering a series of questions okay after he did so his enemies did not like that and all of them 501 person exactly okay made the jury and sentenced him or condemned him to death and of course because he was royal he was very loyal to the city state of Athens he accepted his penalty and he drank some hemlock which is a deadly poison. Okay, now what? Why he did? Why he, he what? Why he killed? Why he killed himself? No, why he was that? Why he was what? I'm sorry, I cannot understand you. Teacher, you're right here, but the jurors commend him to death. Yes. <clears throat> How he did he did he die or he died he died. he drank some hemlock deadly poison yeah who gave him the juice no 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 the jury the people in the court okay uh, like now for example now I say Nawaf is uh, uh, corrupting our own youth so he is spreading some uh, very bad ideas about the Saudi culture and uh, for that. Uh, he must be punished so we send him to the court and in the court he will have a trial during that trial all of the jury and the court will say that he is guilty and he must be condemned to death so we must kill him how can we do that we have variety of ways to cut his head off uh, to uh, electrify him or to make him drink poison 
So the way that uh, uh, Scrape accepted his penalty is by drinking the poison. Okay. What what five means five hundred oh, jury? We started the jury last last week. Remember for please who made the jury of five hundred person so they uh, the day to day uh, activity of so in the trail of uh so create five hundred and one citizen became as the jury meaning that 501 person must give their ideas and their opinions to decide whether Socrates is innocent or guilty okay but he died when he was at 70 years old 70 yes 70 not okay. 70. So, the man accepted his penalty and he accepted to die with honor, defending his own ideas about him. So, the second person we have is Plato, and Plato is his student. So, this is a game. Is what? Game. Plato. Game. Yeah, it's a, a game. It's a game. Plato became a game. Okay, <laughs> Plato no, is no, no. thinkers and philosophers all over the course of history, and he is a Socrates student. Okay, so perhaps they changed him into a game, but <laughs> forever he would be one of the most important thinkers and philosophers over the course of history. So Plato himself, uh, after the execution of uh, his master and his uh, teacher Socrates, he left Athens. He did not like the place and he didn't want to stay in that. And uh, he just uh, uh, left Plato with a lifelong distrust of democracy. That system of democracy, he condemned his own teacher, his own friend, his own godfather to death must be faulty so he hated the, that system of democracy of Athens at that time and he stayed away from Athens for 10 complete years after he came back to Athens after 10 years away he opened a school and he set up that school and he named the school the academy in that school he will follow the footprints of his master Socrates by teaching people about uh, the ideas, the importance of reason, the truth, seeking knowledge, and having debate with the reason and the cause and effect. Everything happens for a reason, and for each reason there must be an effect. And while seeking information, you must know truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay, so he started to set up that school following the footprints of his previous teacher, Socrates. And later he started to organize a book and he made the book and he named it The Republic. The Republic, another form of government, because he hated that system of democracy. So now he needs a republic where people will seek knowledge for the sake of knowledge itself. And he started mentioning his own ideas about the ideal society. Ideal society. An ideal society means a perfect society where there is no fault ever. So he started saying that in an ideal society, we must only have three classes of people. The first class is the workers, which will provide us with our necessity of life. The second class shall be the soldiers, which will defend our state. And the most important class of any society must be the philosophers. Those philosophers will rule the society. And some elite class of the leaders, they will be uh, chosen for a special training. And that training will enable them and we will choose one of them to be a philosopher king by doing so they will evolve and we will maintain an ideal society and although that uh, 
as all other Athenian people, he thought that the man by gender is superior to woman and is able to perform some physical tasks over a woman, yet some women were superior to some men. Those talented women must be chosen for a specific and for elite and special training in order to serve the state. So the most important thing is serving the state of Athens. Any questions so far? Yes, teacher. Yes, now ask. Yes, to him to create. To create, yeah. He is his student. Like, I'm the teacher and you are my student. So I'm telling you, this is right and this is wrong. And you, as my student, believe this is right and this is wrong. After his uh, uh, teacher was executed, after he died by the poison, he left uh, the city-state of Athens and came back after 10 years to teach the people about uh, the ideas of uh, his teacher, Socrates. Anything else? No, teacher. I think we're finished here. Okay. Yes. Okay, goodbye. Bye. Uh, line of the day uh, into three class. He yes. divided his ideal society into three classes. What he divided what? Society. So he imagined an ideal society, a perfect society where people can live together in peace, in peaceful times and in harmony. That ideal society where people will not be. Uh, greedy, where people will not uh, be very bad, and all of them will seek uh, the truth and the principles of uh, a good and peaceful uh, time of peace. He named that place an ideal society, like the society of Saudi Arabia. Okay, so we can become an ideal society if we divided that society into three classes workers, soldiers, and philosophers. Thank you. You are very welcome and see you tomorrow and do your best in your quest.